Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6. Construction season is in full swing. There are some major projects starting tomorrow that you need to know about. You'll want to plan for some extra time on your commute to work. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Jordan Smith. On Spokane South Hill, a section of 29th Avenue will be reduced to one lane. Take a look at this map. Only one lane will be open in between Grand Boulevard and Ray Street in each direction. Hunter Bertram breaks down what you can expect over the next few months. 29th Avenue in the South Hill neighborhood is lined with signs, many for fast food or local businesses, but now one that every driver hates to see road construction ahead. As weather warms, so does the amount of road construction you're going to see. Over time, roads wear and they need to be replaced or resurfaced, which is what's happening on 29th Ave in the South Hill neighborhood. A part of the city's plan to rehabilitate roads while the weather is warm includes this heavily trafficked area. And in an effort to do so cost efficiently and causing as little disruption as possible, 29th Avenue, along with a few other roads in the city, will undergo the grind and overlay process. Once the manholes and sewer structures are pulled out, the grinding begins. Then once it's leveled, new asphalt is put down. This helps maintain the road's structural integrity, durability, and let's be honest, it's nice to see and feel that smooth, shiny black road. Also wrapped into this repair is installing more up-to-code ADA ramps that will increase accessibility to our sidewalks. But not everyone that I spoke with thought it's needed. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it's fine as it is? It's fine, yeah. It's not bad. It's, it's perfectly fine. And for Robbie, that makes sense. He tells me he bikes almost every day. Yet for drivers on the roads planned for construction, a car's wheels and axles feel the need for the road to be repaired. As for timing goes, the city estimates all of the projects in this plan to be done by October. For now, pay attention to the signs and slow down when in a work zone. We'll continue to update you on road closures and repairs online at KXLY.com. In Spokane, Hunter Bertram, 4 News Now. All right, Hunter, thanks for that. And also starting tomorrow, Bigelow Gulch will be closed between Wiley and Havana until the late fall. And during that time, crews will be working on a new water drainage system, resurfacing the road and installing more street lights. To see how you can get around these projects and more, head to KXY.com. Well, if you can believe it, Bloomsday is just over a month away. And if you still haven't signed up, you have until tomorrow before the price of registration jumps to $35. We've got the link on our to register on our website, kxy.com. And it's been a beautiful weekend to get some training in. You're going to have many more opportunities with some sunny weather this week. Meteorologist Matt Gray joins us tonight. To look at your first alert fitness forecast, Matt. All right, yeah, and you'll be able to uh, get a little sweat in as well with some very, well, early May-like temperatures as we pop up into the 60s Monday. We'll see some 70s on Tuesday, and then, well, the bottom falls out. And this black line here on your screen is our average highs, which are in the 52, 53 degree range. We're going to be crashing right back down to that by the time we get to the middle of this week. So if you could sum up the weather for the few days ahead in one chart, this is it. Enjoy these nice days while we have them because it looks like we're about to see an extended streak of cooler, cloudier weather. Right now, it's 56 degrees. We're getting set for the sunset here shortly. We've got some high cirrus clouds. I think that'll make for a really uh, beautiful sunset. And we've had more than a few over the past couple of weeks as warmer weather has attempted to arrive in the inland northwest. Now, once the sun goes down, we'll see quickly dropping temperatures into the 40s. And for the overnight, temperatures down into the middle 30s. As you start your day, things will be a-okay for the beginning of the week. Things look really, really nice. Here's your highs for tomorrow as we'll end up in the middle 60s across downtown Spokane, low 60s on the West Plains, and right around 60 degrees in Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls. As I mentioned, 
we get one more day after tomorrow of warm weather and then things start to uh, well head the opposite direction and that includes a chance for some wet weather as well. We'll talk more about that coming up. All right, Matt, thanks for that. A man is dead and three SWAT deputies are on administrative leave following a standoff in Deer Park Friday night. Law enforcement was serving a warrant for a man wanted for first degree child rape after he failed to appear for trial in Stevens County. Spokane County deputies found him at a home on North Monroe Road near Deer Park. The sheriff's office says the man at one point came outside the house to speak with police, but was uncooperative, saying at one point the police would have to shoot him. Hours later, SWAT sent chemical munitions into the home to prevent him from retreating inside, but the man ended up running back in the house. SWAT eventually breached the home, and the sheriff says that's when shots were fired. Here to be blocked, they could not see inside. They decided to breach that window at that point. Um, and as that occurred, uh, shots were fired by the sheriff's office, SWAT team members, and uh, they immediately took positions of cover. They made sure that everybody in the team was safe. They then located the subject inside the house and rendered aid. And when asked if the man had a weapon, Sheriff John Knowles said that that's a part of the ongoing investigation. SEER team is looking into body cam footage of the deputies involved. Again, three deputies are on administrative leave. Around the Northwest in Boise tomorrow, the trial will begin for the Idaho man accused of killing his wife's two children as well as his former wife. Chad Daybell is accused of killing his first wife, Tammy, and Lori Vallow's seven-year-old son, Joshua, and 16-year-old Tylee Ryan. Both Chad and Lori were charged with murder after the children's bodies were found on a property owned by Daybell back in, Mad in Madison County in June of 2020. Vallow was convicted last summer and sentenced to life in prison. Unlike his wife, Daybell faces the death penalty if convicted. Be sure to download the KXY app and turn on push notifications to get the very latest on this trial and more sent straight to your phone. Still ahead here on 4 News Now at 6 o'clock, demolishing the collapsed Baltimore Bridge while the bodies of four people are left in the river. Plus, an LGBTQ plus nightclub opens in Colorado Springs a year and a half after a deadly shooting in the last one. How the community hopes to heal. And we've had a beautiful Easter weekend and things are going to be heating up for the start of the week. But with the cooler changes comes chance for wet weather as well. We'll talk about how things will start moving for the middle of this week and your extended forecast coming up. Connect with 4 News Now on KXLY+. 4 News Now is brought to you by Portable Cedar Cabins. Sunday Night Sports on 4 News Now is brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino. Expect even more from KXLY Plus. Live updates from the 4 News Now team. Breaking news as it happens. Weather every 10 minutes. Free on your time. Download the app, connect to your streaming TV, and connect on KXLY Plus. Live is giving you more of what you love. Weekdays at 9 and 3 on KXLY ABC4. You didn't live this strong, this long, to get put on the shelf like a porcelain doll. If you have postmenopausal osteoporosis and are at high risk for fracture, you can build new bone with Avenity. Ask your doctor if you can do more than just slowing down bone loss with Avenity. Want stronger bones? Then build new bone. Ivenity can help in just 12 months. Ivenity is proven to reduce spine fracture risk by 73%. Ivenity can increase risk of heart attack, stroke, or death from a cardiovascular problem. Do not take Ivenity if you have low blood calcium or are allergic to it. Serious allergic reactions and low blood calcium have occurred. Tell your doctor about jawbone problems as they have been reported with Ivenity or about pain in your hip, groin, or thigh as unusual thigh bone fractures have occurred. Don't let a break put you on a shelf. Talk to your doctor about building new bone with Avenity. Home. It's both a place and a feeling. At yours, you strive to make new memories, create traditions, share stories, find the fun, embrace the surprises, and celebrate moments big and small. Memories are made at home, in every room, in every moment. Make your house feel like home at the Tin Roof. 
If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2024 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. With standard symmetrical all-wheel drive and up to 32 miles per gallon. Plus, 97% of Outback vehicles sold in the last 10 years are still on the road today. The 2024 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Drive with 1.9% financing during the Subaru A Lot to Love event at AutoNation Subaru. Sign up for the 4 News Now Daily Local at KXLY.com. Welcome back to 4 News Now. You can see Riverfront Park was popular today, full of families and people soaking in the sunshine. This Easter, everybody was able to enjoy some blue skies and some sunny weather. I mean, it was a great, great weekend to be out and about, Matt. Yeah, it certainly was. Took a walk myself around the neighborhood today. Uh, the dogs were out in the yard yeah. for a good portion of the day as well. So it's just been uh, just been gorgeous. And we are going to see more days like this, at least for a couple more. And then we can dream about when they're going to become more consistent later on this spring. But let's begin with our warming trend that we're going to continue to see over the next couple of days. Temperatures right now in the 50s and 60s across the valleys and lowlands of the inland northwest. This is about anywhere between 1 and 4 or 5 degrees in most places warmer than we were at this time yesterday. You can see in Okanagan County, we're about 7 degrees warmer than this time yesterday. So things are really heating up and we're going to add at least least this much, if not more, probably a, a good four or five degrees onto this for tomorrow. And by the time we get to Tuesday, we're going to be somewhere like 10 degrees above where we are now. Here's the setup. We are, despite having clear blue skies and really nice weather, we're not even in the full influence of this high pressure that's coming in off the coast. And as this moves in, that'll really help our temperature soar. But it's not going to stick around for too long because, as you can see on the other side here of our jet stream winds, we've got a strong low, cool air that's really going to be working its way into our area. And that'll be here by the middle of this week. And that means we will transition just like that from the beautiful weather we have now to, well, back to the 50s and the clouds and the rain that we always are waffling back and forth between at this point in the spring season. So let's show you how this plays out here and we will see some cloud cover from time to time. But once again, for the next couple days, not expecting much. One notable difference. Our friends, if you're watching from OMAC, if you're watching from, say, around uh, the Chelan, Leavenworth, Wenatchee area, if you're at the foot of the Cascades, you may run into a shower or perhaps even a couple of thunderstorms after that warm day on Tuesday as the first round of cool air crosses the mountains on Tuesday night. So that'll be something we are going to be watching out for fairly closely, but I'm not expecting much on Tuesday around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. Then as we get to early Wednesday morning, mountain snow in the Cascades as the cool air continues to rush in and we'll be looking I think at least for the first half of the day for some uh, off and on showers around, well, North Idaho and around the Palouse region that will likely linger into the evening as you get to Lewiston and points to the south, which it looks like in central Idaho there's going to be some very wet days coming up in the forecast. As for us, we are going to get to a point where we see scattered wet weather every single day, but it doesn't look like there's going to be kind of the huge push of moisture where, say, we've had in recent weeks where it has rained all day long. I don't think we have one of those days on tap for us, but we'll watch and see how things develop here. In the meantime, we've got rain chances rising pretty much each and every day coming up. Speaking of rising, here's your rising temperatures for the afternoon. Tomorrow we'll spend a, at least a good three hours, four hours in the 60s, and we will really just have another beautiful, beautiful day to kick off the week. Mid 30s and low 40s for your lows around the region tonight. And here are your temperatures for the afternoon across the region. We'll hit 70 in OMAC and we'll be very close in other parts of the Columbia Basin. Here is your extended outlook. And once we cool down, we'll end up with low 50s in the afternoon. We'll see middle and low 30s in the morning with that wet weather. In Colorado Springs, a new LGBTQ plus nightclub has opened nearly a year and a half since a gunman opened fire, killing five people at Club Q. Co-founder Michael Anderson ran Club Q and is one of the survivors of the shooting.
He says the process of bringing the cue to life has helped him heal. It's given me purpose beyond tragedy and beyond pain. We can be sad at times, but we want this to be a part of a healing, a part of a, a positive move forward for everybody. And, and we hope that everyone who gathers here can find community and find acceptance, no matter who you are. The Q is an entirely new venue, but stands for the same purpose as Club Q did. That's equality and inclusion. In Baltimore, the dangerous and complicated work of removing the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge has begun. Meanwhile, officials say recovering the bodies of the four missing construction workers remains a priority. Here's ABC's Ike Ajachi with the details. Highly trained demolition crews have begun cutting portions of the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge into smaller sections, allowing them to be safely lifted from the Patapsco River. A cargo ship crashing into the bridge in Baltimore Tuesday. A total of six construction workers are presumed to have died. We have released the first $60 million in federal funding to help Maryland get uh, the initial stage, which, which starts, of course, with the wreckage removal demolition, but also the uh, acquisition, uh, the procurement, and the preparations for the new bridge. The scale of the operation is huge. Salvage teams will use gas-powered cutters to separate sections of the steel bridge, while divers will conduct underwater assessments. We have to be smart. We've got to be safe. We have to make sure we're protecting these first responders and these people who are working on it. Uh, and at the same time, we have to move with a measurement of speed because we have got to get this channel open. Three massive cranes from the U.S. Navy are already on site. A fourth expected to arrive this week. One of those cranes capable of lifting a thousand tons. It's not just that you have to remove the wreckage. It's that you have to do it in a way that doesn't cause portions of the bridge that are that are there across the water to shift. Out of the more than 4,000 shipping containers on that car, ship, the NTSB has determined 56 of them contain hazardous materials. 3,000 feet of boom has been deployed to contain any leaks. And when we say hazmat, we're talking about things like uh, ion batteries and perfumes. The good news is that what we're continuing to see is even the materials that are being collected in the boom do not have any impact on the communities. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Baltimore. Coming up after the break in sports, the uphill road to the championships for the Zags has ended. But what's ahead for the team? Sydney Berger has the story coming up in sports. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. So what do you think about these? We're going to take everything. From design and products to removal and installation, Rebath is with you through every step of your remodel. Call us or visit Rebath.com and save $1,500 off your complete bathroom remodel. My late father-in-law lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had AMD. I didn't know it then, but it can progress to GA, an advanced form of the disease. His struggle with vision loss from AMD made me want to help you see warning signs of GA like hazy or blurred vision. So it's hard to see fine details, colors that appear dull or washed out or trouble with low light that makes driving at night a real challenge if you think you have ga don't wait treatments are available ask a retina specialist about fda approved treatments for ga and go to gawontwait.com sunday night sports on four news now is brought to you by coeur d'alene casino Dear 2031, we look forward to seeing you. After our 160-point quality assurance inspection, we'll be Toyota certified used vehicles with seven-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranties. Not to honk our own horns, but the best new cars make the best used cars. Yours, Toyota. Get 5.49% APR for up to 60 months on many of your favorite Toyota certified used models. Find yours at toyotacertified.com. Toyota, let's go places. Punch in, roll in, and drop in five days a week five. Yeah. to the H&I Day Shift. The heroes are here on KXLY 4.3. It's the sale that took the country by storm. Denver Mattress presents the smash hit Spring into Savings with fan favorites like Sealy Comfort for me and better sleep too. And don't forget a free gift for you. Save up till 150. Just the epic toy. Ship free. Mazda 365 guarantee. But don't wait. Spring into savings at Denver Mattress ends soon. So what do you think about these? We're going to take everything. From out. design and products to removal and installation, 
Rebath is with you through every step of your remodel. Call us or visit Rebath.com and save $1,500 off your complete bathroom remodel. Welcome into sports. I'm Sydney Berger. While the madness in March continues, it's sadness for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. The best month for college hoops cut short for the Zags after a sweet 16 lost against Purdue on Friday night. Of course, the guys are disappointed on what on missing what would have been a third straight Elite Eight appearance. We have to take a step back and realize how far the Zags managed to get this postseason with the uphill climb they faced mid-year. Losses to San Diego State, Santa Clara, and St. Mary's put the Bulldogs on the bubble for earning an NCAA tournament bid in the beginning of February. But eight straight wins to end the regular season was enough for their 25th consecutive March Madness appearance. Now, to appear was one thing. To prove they deserved a five seed was another. But the Zags that showed up in Salt Lake City was the strongest we had seen them all season. The Bulldogs won their first and second round games, each by 21 points, making it to their ninth straight Sweet 16. Not the ending they hoped for, but a loss to Purdue is more than enough fuel to get right back to the same place. Pretty much everybody coming back, um, except for Anton, which is a huge loss for us. But um, you know that that hunger we have now, that motivation, you know, getting a taste for this, the Sweet 16. Um, I think it's only going to motivate us. The Bulldogs will have to handle next season without Spokane native Anton Watson. Players calling him one of the greatest to ever wear the Gonzaga uniform. But good for the Zags. There's quite a few vets expected to make a return, which will provide consistency for GU. A potential lineup with Graham E.K., Ryan Nemhard, Nolan Hickman, Ben Gregg, Pepperdine transfer Michael Ajay, along with good depth coming off the bench, has to have Zag fans a little giddy at the possibilities for this team. The ceiling is high, but something to keep in mind for next season. There will be another addition to the West Coast Conference play, and that's a team about 90 minutes down the road in Washington State. The Cougars entering a scheduling agreement with the WCC for the next two seasons while things with the Pac-12 conference realignment get sorted out, which means Gonzaga and WCU matchups are inevitable. And while the Gonzaga roster will look pretty familiar, Washington State will have a lot of question marks starting from their coaching staff to at least half of their roster despite their historic run for the tournament for the first time since 2008. Throughout the last week, we learned now former head coach Kyle Smith will be coaching in the ACC next season as Stanford's leading man and then star redshirt freshman Miles Rice announced he's tr entering the transfer portal along with Kamani Winsu, Dylan Darling, Ruben Chinyelu and potentially Andre Yakimovsky who says he might test out the NBA waters. Now we have heard reports of Eastern Washington's head coach David Riley as one of the top candidates for the vacant job at WSU and as WSU is also short and athletic director the university's president Kirk Schultz is leading the coaching search as of now. However, the WC women are still alive in the postseason. They did miss their chance at a fourth straight NCAA tournament appearance, but they still earned the number one seed in the WBIT. The Cougs are in Indianapolis for the semifinals where they will take on the four seeded Illinois in the women's basketball invitation tournament. The winner of this matchup will face the winner of number one Penn State and number one Villanova for the championship. A WBIT title will be the first ever postseason championship win for the women's program. They're only two wins away from possibly making history. That game is on April 1st, scheduled for tip-off at 2 p.m. Pacific time. In studio, Sydney Berger, 4 News Now Sports. All right, Sydney, thanks so much for that. Well, spring is in full swing, and it's a great time to get outside and enjoy nature as it starts to wake up from winter. The rugged channel Scablin, south of Sprague, Washington, offers beauty that you won't see from I-90. Tonight, Therefore Adventure takes us to the Escure Ranch Towel Falls Trail. Grab a pair of good hiking boots, your mountain bike, or even your fishing pole. The trail from Escure Ranch to Towel Falls has a little bit of everything. It follows the flow of Rock Creek through the Channel Scablands. You'll be greeted by wildflowers. Cliffs of basalt tower up. There's a good chance you'll see deer, an elk, maybe a wily coyote. Keep an eye out for rattlesnakes. The payoff is reaching the falls. There are three of them. The creek splits, forming an island. The largest falls is in the western channel. Make sure to bring water and food. It's a little more than six miles round trip. At the trailhead, you can wander over and take a look at the old ranch. A 
testament to the people of the past who saw beauty in this rugged land and turned it into a beautiful life. Brian Neal, 4 News Now. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Inland Northwest Honda Dealers. It's the spring into savings sale at Furniture Row, and that means huge discounts throughout the store. Save on sofas and sectionals, dining groups, bedrooms, and more. Plus, four years no interest. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. The spring into savings sale, on now at Furniture Row. News. For years, Washington Realtors embraced some of the most consumer-friendly practices in the nation, putting fairness and transparency at the heart of the home buying process, providing clients with the duties of their real estate broker in the transaction, along with a written agreement explaining the cost of brokerage services and receiving and signing this agreement up front. Now, these principles are not just industry standard, they're state law. Transparency in Real Estate, brought to you by Washington Realtors. Is your broker a realtor? It's Coeur d'Alene Casino's Core Stars Entertainment Series. 38 specials, timeless blast of Southern Rock hits. Live Thursday, April 18th. Damn straight. Don't miss Scotty McCreary, one of country music's biggest stars. Live Thursday, May 2nd. It's No Holds Barred Entertainment at King of the Cage, featuring upcoming MMA stars on Thursday, June 13th. Visit cdacasino.com to buy your tickets now and check out the full Core Stars lineup. Winning is just the beginning. Hi, welcome to Coeur Honda. Thank you. I've been coming to Coeur d'Alene Honda for years, and they always treat me just like family here. Our customers love how easy it is to do business with us. We have Hondas that fit everyone's budget. Awarded Dealer of the Year and rated 4.7 on Google. All new Hondas and select pre-owned come with our nationwide lifetime warranty. Plus, all new Hondas come with two years free maintenance. Which Honda would you prefer? Coeur d'Alene Honda with the lifetime warranty at no additional cost to you or the other guys? Don't forget about our lifetime warranty. <laughs> Want free college or career training? It's possible. From Lincoln Center Theater that brought you The King and I and South Pacific comes a sumptuous new revival of the most perfect musical of all time. My Fair Lady. April 2nd through 7th at First Interstate Center for the Arts. Get tickets at broadwayspokane.com. Don't make a fuss. Spring into, into savings, savings at Denver Mattress. You'll shop brands like Sealy and Temper and Parable 2. For years, no interest. Ship free to you. Denver Mattress. Oh, spring. Such a fun little season where we have everything in the span of a week. And it's another one of those weeks. We'll be looking at uh, the possibility of some mountain snow and some decent skiing as we head into the month of April, if things pan out here for the end of the week. And, well, we've got some windy and wet weather after the beautiful next couple of days. What's the weirdest part of this area is, like, you get 70-degree days and then it's snowfall. And it's just, like, that weird cycle where we can't, like... <laughs> Enjoy every weekend. We'll make up for it a few months. That'll Give it some okay. time.